Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus of Nazareth is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed this morning. Today is October the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, as I told you yesterday, and I trust that you have read the first chapter in the book of Job, if you have not, please pause this, go and read that one single chapter, and then come back and continue. But as I stated yesterday, we're going to begin a study throughout the book of Job. And so we're going to begin by recapping the first chapter. Now, the first thing we're told in the book of Job is that Job was a perfect and upright man. He feared God. Now, this is literal fear, quaking and trembling under the authority of the Almighty. He feared God. He was upright, which means he was pleasing to God, and he eschewed evil or he shunned evil. He resisted evil. It tells us in verse 2 that there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And his sons wanted to throw a feast. Now keep in mind, most theologians allude to the fact that Job was written before the flood. So the feast days that later become known among the tribes of Israel, they're not set in place yet. But these young men wanted to feast and celebrate, and so they invite their three sisters to eat with them. Now, when this time of celebration is over in verse 5, it tells us that Job sent his sons and daughters, he sent to them to come unto him. And so Job rose up early in the morning, he offered burnt sacrifices unto the Lord, according to the number of each child, and his purpose was so that if the sons had sinned, if the daughters had sinned, and they had cursed God in their hearts, that the sacrifice unto God would be found pleasing, and that God would offer forgiveness unto the sons or daughters that had committed such sins. Now the story is going to shift a little bit. In verse 6, we're told that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Now, if you will flip all the way back to Genesis chapter 6, in verse 1, in a very controversial story, the Bible tells us it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and beautiful, and they took them to be wives. We know that they had sexual intercourse from them, and from that sexual intercourse came what was known as giants, or Nephilim. Now, none of this is disputed by Hebrew theology. What is argued about is who is the sons of God here. You see, there are those that would say the sons of God are the sons of Shem, one of Noah's sons. And we've done a complete series on this in the book of Enoch. And if you haven't seen it, I would highly encourage you to go and watch it. Almost 50 videos. But what's interesting, when it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men and took them to be their wives, that sons of God is the same Hebrew word used here that there was a day when the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan himself came among them. So we know that these are the angels, and they are coming in a council before the Lord. And so the Lord looks at Satan and says, where have you been? What have you been up to? And he says, I've been roaming the earth. I'm seeking someone to devour. And God, notice God mentions Job. It isn't Satan that mentions Job. It's God that mentions Job. He says, have you seen my servant Job? And Satan basically says, well, yes, I've seen him, but you've got a, a boundary around him of protection and I can't get to him to destroy him. But you take that boundary down and I'll promise you I'll get him to curse you to your face. And so God, the almighty Yahweh says, I'll accept that challenge. You can do anything you want, but don't you touch his body. And so we're told in the next few verses, picking up at verse 13, for instance, there was a day when Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house. 
And there came a messenger unto Job. A, a messenger came running into Job and said, The oxen were plowing. The asses were feeding. But these Sabians, this, this other nation, fell upon your children and took them away. And they've slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped to tell thee. Now, while he was speaking, it says in verse 16, the words were even out of his mouth. Another servant came running in and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven, has burned up the sheep and the servants, has consumed them. And I only am escaped to tell thee. And while he was speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans, another nation, came out with three bands, fell upon the camels, and have stolen them and taken them away. They've killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was speaking, there came another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the older brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness. It smote the four corners of the house. The house fell upon them and killed them. And I only am escaped to tell thee. All this is coming at once at Job. Before one person gets finished speaking, another person is giving Job more bad news. The, Job's whole world has fallen around him. He has lost everything. If you look in verse 3, it says, actually verse 2, it says, Job had seven sons, three daughters. Job's substance, in other words, the things that he possessed, was 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep, friends. 3,000 camels. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, a very great household of servants and handmaidens, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Job was very successful, prosperous, the Bible tells us. And in a matter of moments, when Satan is given the opportunity to unleash all his fury, he doesn't waste a moment. He attacks with such violence and vengeance. And in a matter of moments, Everything that Job loves and holds dear is gone. And look what verse 20 says. It says, Then Job arose. He tore his mantle. He shaved his head. He fell down on the ground. And he said, Boo hoo. Woe is me. Why did God do this to me? Is that what he said? Of course not. It says he worshiped. He worshiped, friends. I got to tell you, I haven't had a lot of bad things happen in my life, and I'm grateful for that. I haven't lost a lot of loved ones, nor have I lost a lot of friends. I could count all of the, the bad things on one hand in my life. I know that there are a few people that can say that. But even in those moments when I did suffer those bad things, I didn't worship. I said, boo-hoo, woe is me. Where is God? Why did he do this to me? And yet the Bible tells us that Job has such a strong relationship with the Almighty that he fell and worshipped. And notice, this is what he said. He said, naked I came out of my mother's womb. I didn't come into this world with material possessions. I didn't come into this world prosperous. I came in naked. And so shall I return unto the Lord naked. The Lord gave all these bountiful blessings that I have enjoyed in this life, the Lord gave them to me. And now the Lord has chosen to take them away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, I don't know what your future looks like, but I know that there's a day coming. It's inevitable. There's a day coming when you're going to suffer. It could be a loss of a family member. It could be a loss of a job. It could be material possessions. It could be imprisonment. It could be your death. But there's coming a day where you're going to suffer and I'm going to suffer. And may we be found true as Job was to be worshiping in those moments that our attitude would be the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that for you, friends. And the chapter ends by saying this. In all this, Job did not sin. And notice, nor did he charge God foolishly. How guilty we have been so many times in our lives to charge God foolishly. We don't see the big picture. We don't know the outcome. 
And if we truly believe he is on the throne and he reigns and all things are going to work together for our good, then friends, we cannot allow ourselves to charge God foolishly. And we do that only by knowing him, really knowing him. Because if we truly know him, we would never charge him so foolishly. Well, we're going to end there today, friends. We're going to pick up on our next video, and, and we're going to talk about Job's three friends. Now, there's actually four, but the youngest of them remains silent for the majority of the book. But we're going to enter into a conversation that Job has with his three friends. And so one chapter will be one friend talking, the next chapter will be another friend, the next chapter will be Job responding, and on and on throughout the book is how it goes. And so I encourage you to read Job chapter 2, and that's where we'll pick up our next time together. Well, friends, I love you. I'm so thankful that you're here again with us. I pray that you'll walk in the blessings of the Lord Jesus, and that in everything you do and experience today, your response will be blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.